come up for me for a second? Well, I think there's some lessons to be learned today. Um, I think when you're not uh, mentally ready to to play a game, I don't really care who you're playing, and that may be hard for some people to understand the concept of competition, um, that you really go out there to play to be the best player that you can be. Uh, you don't look for some external factor like who you're playing against right, to motivate you, um, because it's really not about winning or losing. It's really about trying to be the best player. And we didn't play very well as a team in the first half, which, you know, I take a lot of responsibility for not uh, getting our team ready, more psychologically ready to go out there and perform and play better. Uh, you know every team that comes here and plays us uh, is going to give us their best shot. These guys got everything to gain and nothing to lose. Uh, and we got nothing but downside in the game. Uh, so if you can't motivate yourself to uh, look within yourself to be the best player that you can be, uh, then you're not going to be ready to play. Uh, but I think we did respond really well in the second half. Uh, of the game. Um, I thought basically uh, they tried to shrink the game as much as they could, limit the possessions, all right, which we had gone into the game knowing that they would do that. And we told the offense, you've got to take advantage of every opportunity that you have. Well, in the first half, we you know, turned the ball over. We went three and out once. Uh, we didn't score a touchdown in the red zone. Uh, so we didn't take advantage of the opportunities that we had. I think in the second half, uh, we did a much better job on defense. We made some halftime adjustments to a couple of the formations that they were in. Um, and I think it helped us a little bit. The two big plays that we gave up were, you know, everybody's got to fit their responsibility on the option. Uh, and two times we had uh, a guy not, not take the pitch when he was supposed to take the pitch. And um, they resulted in, you know, two 40 plus yard runs. Uh, but other than that, uh, I thought that uh, our guys tried to execute, you know, fairly well. Um, so uh, obviously the pass defense must have been pretty good. This is the first time I've ever think I've ever coached in a game where the other team didn't have any yards passing. Um, so, um, but anyway, I think there's lessons to be learned uh, for our team. Hopefully, they'll learn and grow from this. Uh, you got to give their team a lot of credit. They play with a lot of heart. Um, they they're very tough, physical, um, and aggressive. I don't think there's any excuse for guys getting um, personal foul penalties at any point in the game uh, and getting engaged with things that um, are not beneficial to our team. And when you get one of those, you affect everybody on the team. Um, so it's not just about you. But uh, from an injury standpoint, Alex Leatherwood has a twisted ankle. We think he'll be OK. Uh, Damian Harris uh, has what they are calling a mild concussion. Uh, and he had a little bit of, you know, the, the reason they were checking him out was they were checking his neck, uh, which seems to be okay. Uh, and Deontay Thompson has a bruised knee, uh, which doesn't seem to be a significant injury. Probably could have put him back in the game, but just, you know, didn't do it. Coach, we'll start on the right with Charlie. Just what did you think of to his performance today? Um, well, I thought he played pretty well. I think it was 18 for 22. and. You know, for a guy that most people thought shouldn't play in a game, I thought he responded really well by taking the challenge and going out there and doing what was best for his team. And, you know, all of our fans, you know, they come to the game to see him play. So that, that, I think that's fair that he goes out and competes like every other player on our team. And um, he, he, I thought he did a good job in a game. We got a little slow start on offense. Uh, but once we got going, I thought uh, we did a pretty good job. He made some good reads. He made some good throws. And, um, you know, the plan was also to we wanted to play Jalen somewhere between 12 and 15 plays in the game uh, because he was ready to play uh, at some point in the game uh, with the good players so that hopefully having not played for several weeks, uh, we could get a little rust off. Uh, so he, he – he did a good job, and I think that'll be helpful to, you know, him coming back and be able to develop confidence um, as well. Tommy over on the right. Yeah, Coach, when you have a team that, that doesn't come maybe out as fired up or, or ready as you'd like, what do you do as a coaching staff at halftime or maybe before that to try to change that? And, and also, would you be happy if you never had to defend the option again? Well, um, me personally, uh, I know that 
these people do a really good job of executing what they do. Um, you know, I, I'm a person that really doesn't believe in cut blocking, uh, that I think that's a dangerous play in football. Um, that offense is based on a lot of cut blocking, which is not against the rules, so nobody's doing anything wrong. Uh, but I certainly wish that we would change some of the rules that we have uh, for player safety. Um, but um, th this, this is so unique to have to play this in this day and age. It has very little carryover with anything that you do uh, prior to the game. I don't have very ca little carryover beyond this game. Um, so, but the one thing is, is I was really pleased with the way the defensive players sort of took the challenge, you know, to try to play this offense. Uh, I thought that when we played Georgia Southern, it's been several years ago now, and what was it, 2011? Um, you know, we couldn't get the players to really sort of buy into what you had to do to stop the offense. Uh, I, I thought that our players tried to do that, um, and. Other than a couple mistakes that we made, which when you make one against that, you're going to give up plays. Um, I thought they did a pretty good job. But if we have them on the schedule, I guess we have to do it. I'm not going to quit over it. I can promise you that. Go back in. Stay with the right. What is it like playing a team that is that one-dimensional? And also, what, what makes the run fit so difficult with the triple option? Well, because the point of attack moves, the ball moves, the point of attack moves throughout the play. Does a dive guy get it? Does the quarterback keep it? Is there a pitch guy? And then there's multiple blocking schemes, whether it's trap option, lead option, zone option, load option, right, which affects the run fit for the perimeter as well as um, the inside out players. So it's just completely different than what you normally see and what players are accustomed to playing. Yeah, we're here with uh, Jeff Spiegel. Nick, when you come into a situation like that at halftime and, and um, you're disappointed with the team's play in the first half, uh, who does most of the challenging there in the locker room? You, the team leaders, or and what was that like today? Uh, you know, I, I think you know the leadership stepped up a little bit. Um, we go through and talk about the adjustments that we need to make as a coaching staff, which I thought we made some good ones. Um, helped us on defense, a couple of things that we adjusted to. Um, and, you know, I talked to the team about, you know, what, 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 what are you really made of? I mean, you know, you're talking about a team that doesn't have maybe any players on their team that could play for our team. And yet, we're not, we're not beating them. We're not dominating them at the line of scrimmage. We're not dominating. We're not finishing. We're not playing to our standard. We're not given the kind of um, discipline and execution that we need to be able to execute regardless of what they do on offense, defense, or special teams. So, you know, everybody's got to kind of check their whole card uh, deep down inside and see what you want to accomplish and what you want to do. And um, I thought the players responded pretty well. Coach, any comment to, to a breaking A.J. McCarron's single season touchdown record? I'm sorry? Any comment of Tua breaking A.J. McCarron's single season touchdown record? Um, you know, I wasn't informed of that, so um, I guess I have to react to it right now. Um, look, A.J. McCarron was a fantastic player for us here and a three year starter and um, won a couple championships, I think. And um, so his accomplishments will always be appreciated, but. Uh, it's always nice to see, you know, our players who um, are performing well get recognized um, for what they do. And, you know, Tua's had a really good year, and um, we're excited for him that um, he's, you know, set a record or broke a record or whatever. But I'm sure the first thing he would tell you that if it wasn't for his teammates, he wouldn't have the opportunity to do that. So I think it's something that – you know, we all share, uh, that the whole offense should share in terms of um, the quality job the offensive line does and the receivers and uh, everybody involved. Thanks, Thank you.